The Final Fantasy VII Remake has been out for a couple of months now, and although some people liked it and some people didn't, I think we can all agree that it was definitely a success for Square Enix. Their goals with the game were to make old Final Fantasy fans happy, create some new Final Fantasy fans, and of course make a profit, and I think it's safe to say that they achieved those goals. But in my opinion, it's going to be much harder for Part 2 to achieve those same goals. For starters, Part 2 is going to be a much different game, and it's going to be a lot different than the usual sequel. Usually, developers can take the first game of a series and kind of hit a reset button, tweak some things, change some things around, and create a new story for the sequel. Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2, on the other hand, needs to kind of jump off the pedestal that Part 1 made, it needs to stay similar enough so it doesn't feel like a completely new series, but it also needs to change things up enough so we're not just getting more of Part 1. In addition, Part 2 has a lot to add in terms of just mechanics. It's gotta have some kind of world map at this point, different locations to go to, different characters that are gonna be introduced, and all of that still needs to fit in the original engine that they made for Part 1. And when I say engine, I don't mean like game development engine. I mean all the mechanics that they created in Part 1. For example, in part one you can control up to three characters at a time, but how does that work when we have a party of a lot more characters? The Materia system is kind of based around the original elemental magic Materia, but how does all of that work when you add stronger Materia? The weapon system is based around a couple of different weapons with different mechanics, but how does that work when you add even more weapons? The combat is based around Cloud and Tifa being upfront attackers and Barrett and Eris standing back. But how does this all work when we add even more characters like Yuffie, Kate, Sith, and Sid? The map design is based on Midgar and visiting old sectors that you've already visited before but with new characters. But how does that work with the world map and how in Dis 2 you're basically just visiting one town at a time in a linear fashion? The side quest system was linked to the chapter system. When you were in a certain chapter you could do certain side quests. But how does that work when we have some kind of world map or being able to visit different towns, can you only visit a certain town during a certain chapter, or are side quests going to be open to you to do at any time? Now I'm not saying that any of this is going to be specifically difficult for the Square Enix developers to create. What I am saying is that it's going to be hard to meld Part 2 and Part 1 together to even feel like two games of the same series. So obviously there's a lot to do and a lot to talk about when it comes to Part 2, but I thought today what we would do is just simply talk about some of the simple things that Part 2 needs to do just to be a good video game. Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 was a great game in terms of its core. It was very polished, but it did have some flaws. I thought it would be fun to ask you guys what you think should be added or removed from Part 2 to make it a better experience overall. Before I get to any specific comments, I want to talk about just the general obvious stuff that almost everyone commented on. By far the biggest thing I got comments about, and something that I talked about at length in my own review video, is the aerial combat. You can talk all you want about the crazy plot or certain things that Square Enix decided to do with some of the characters, but when it comes to the aerial combat, there's no excuse. It's gotta be better. I talked about this a lot in my review, so I'm not gonna go too far into it, but let's just say Square Enix really likes to use aerial enemies, but not create a combat system or a camera that can let you attack them efficiently. Probably my biggest complaint with the Final Fantasy VII Remake is having certain abilities with characters, like Blade Burst with Cloud, seem like they're created for aerial enemies, but that's not at all how they work. Another glaring flaw that should be able to be easily fixed in Part 2 is the menu. For the most part, the menu is great, but there's two things in particular that a lot of fans were frustrated with. The first being that you can't see all of the weapon abilities at a glance. You need to go into the upgrade menu to see what each weapon does. And furthermore, the really long animation you get every time you go into the upgrade menu. I know it might be silly for some people to hear that a lot of people were frustrated with a few seconds of animation in the menu, but you have to understand that a lot of these people are fans of old PS1 RPGs, and old PS1 RPGs always had really nice fluid menus so you could quickly get in and out, check your character stats, equip things for battles, etc. At the very least, the remake should be trying to recapture that feeling of changing your loadouts quickly before a big battle. The second glaring issue is the Materia menu. For the most part, it's okay, but I think there definitely needs to be some improvements given that the original Materia menu feels nicer and easier to organize. If the original game is doing a menu better than the remake, you did something wrong. And for the love of God, why is there not an option to pick all of the Materia equipped to one character and swap it to another character? 
the original could do that, why not the remake? Another big one that I got a lot of comments about was the summoning system. A lot of people think it just needs some kind of rework in part two. I like the ideas of the summoning system, but there's two things in particular that I really don't like. Firstly, I liked how in the original game, the summons were more of a risk reward system. You got this really powerful spell, but it costs a lot of MP, and it also cut down your maximum HP for equipping it. In the remake, there's really no reason not to equip a summon. They give you stat boosts even if you don't use them. Secondly, the summons are luck-based, and you never know when they're going to show up. I like the idea of having a summon appear in a clutch moment and saving you from certain death, but in practice it just doesn't seem to be as fun. Also, they don't tell you the sizes of the summons, and certain summons can't be summoned in certain arenas depending on their size. That would have been a nice thing for them to just tell you in the menu. Also, I don't think a lot of people enjoyed the fact that some of the summons were DLC and pre-order bonuses. Honestly, I haven't put much thought into what a rework of the summons would look like, but I think just having them as a regular materia that levels up would be a good start. Another thing that was in almost every single comment were the background texture issues. This was something that a lot of the reviewers had an issue with when they first played the game, but I'd have to imagine that given that this game will be on the PS5, it should be easily resolved in the future. The last obvious thing I want to get to is the plot. The fans are obviously divided on the plot, but I think the general consensus is that Part 2 shouldn't try to be one-to-one -to, -one to the original game. It would be pretty ridiculous to see Part 1 go crazy with the story and then just have Part 2 be normal Final Fantasy VII. They already made the leap, so we definitely want to see that come to a conclusion at some point. Now having said that, I definitely think that most of the fans want to see them tone down the craziness for Part 2. Part of this is because the story in Part 2, depending on when they end, is a lot more serious. I also think in general people just thought they went a bit too far with Part 1. Even people that enjoyed the whole Whispers thing thought that it could have been toned down a bit. I think the best thing we could see for Part 2 is something that's very close to the original story, but has just enough added to it in order to pay off the original setup of Part 1. In other words, don't leave us hanging from Part 1, but tone it down a bit. A lot of people talked about the unnecessary padding in Part 1, a lot of people talked about Sephiroth and how they showed him way too much, but also talked about just some of the parts that didn't need to be there. Well, I have the perfect solution for Part 2. We want some extra padding in the game, but we don't want to use Sephiroth or unnecessary side quests. Here we go. Two Turkey Boys. Part 1 did a great job of setting up the Turks, but never paid them off. So this is the prime time to use them and further explore their personalities. You could even have sections where you play as the Turks. You could play as Rude, going around punching enemies like Tifa. It'd be a great way to pad out the playtime without slowing the story down too much. And it'd get really spicy when you got into the fights with the Turks and Cloud's team. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's look at some of your comments. Many people probably disagree, but I'd like more grinding. By the time I beat the game, I was practically leveled up all the way, and there wasn't much of a reason to do extra fighting outside of what you did in the course of a natural playthrough. Part of the fun of an RPG to me is spending time becoming extra powerful so you can decimate regular enemies and even bosses. Also, Classic Mode not locked on easy. Classic could be a lot of fun, but it needs to be changed from its current state. I doubt almost anyone actually played Classic in Part 1. Well, let's get something straight right off the bat. Classic Mode blows! Seriously, Classic Mode was a complete waste of time. I said it was going to be a complete waste of time when I played the demo. Everyone said it was going to be a complete waste of time when they played the demo. And Square Enix didn't listen, and it's still a waste of time. It's not fun, it's not challenging, it doesn't feel like a turn-based RPG like they wanted it to. It's not made for anyone. You might as well call it Baby Mode, or Story Mode, like some games have a super easy difficulty so that you can just listen to the story. That's what they should have called it. Story Mode. Super easy Story Mode. Baby Mode. As for leveling up, it's an interesting topic, because I agree with what you're saying. A lot of RPGs, it's fun to grind and level up, but I think that the idea behind the remake was to be a more current action RPG, and current action RPGs try to stick away from grinding too much in order to kind of speed up the action. 
Then again, Kingdom Hearts had a lot of grinding in it, and that was always super fun, so I'm not really sure why they didn't incorporate any of that into the remake. On the other hand, I do kind of like how they increased your experience gain after the game was over, so you could quickly go into hard mode without having to grind first. Hard mode is super fun, and I think a lot of people maybe wouldn't have even tried it if they had to grind first. So I don't know, I feel like grinding more would have been more faithful to the original, but having everything streamlined was better for a current gen game. Not to mention that this is only part one, so I don't think people want to do hundreds of hours of grinding just to have it potentially reset in part two. I hate the interruptions during combat. I dislike it when you summon and everything freezes and you're forced to watch it, but the one I really hate is when the bosses change phases. You never know when it's coming and suddenly the huge combo you had ready to attack him is reset and you lose everything. My suggestion would be to show the boss's health as different colored bars or multiple bars so you'll know when the current phase ends or some other way. The other one is about losing ATB by being interrupted by some attacks. If the command fizzles, we shouldn't lose the ATB. Okay, so first of all, the health gates. The health gates kinda suck. I feel like what happened is that Square wanted to make certain things really strong. They didn't want to nerf you and make you feel really weak. A very important thing with RPGs is that you feel strong and feel like you can smash enemies, but at the same time, they didn't want you to one-shot any bosses. So I feel like the health gate thing was potentially a late game decision by them to make sure you still felt strong, but to keep everything balanced. I've gone back and forth with the health gates. I like how there's different cutscenes throughout the fight making it feel more epic, but I absolutely hate setting up a combo and having it cancelled. Especially when it seems like a lot of the game is based around this, especially staggering. It does not feel like a good gameplay decision when you work so hard to finally stagger an enemy and then you can only do a few hits before they health gate. The entire idea of the combat is to work up towards the stagger, so you should be able to get the payoff from your stagger. Unfortunately, I don't think removing the health gates would really help, I think that would just make a balanced nightmare, but I do really like the idea of at least showing the health gates so you can know to keep your strong stuff until you've just hit one. Now as for ATB interrupts, I personally really like them, but I completely understand why people don't. I've played Kingdom Hearts for a long time, and a big mechanic of those games is to make sure your attacks don't get cancelled. If your attacks couldn't be cancelled, the game would just devolve into the easiest hack and slash of all time. However, one cool thing in Kingdom Hearts is the ability Leaf Bracer, which allows you to use cures without them being interrupted. It would be cool to see something like that in the remake, maybe even a materia that makes it harder for your attacks to be interrupted. Out of combat player controllable character swapping, and I'll be happy. Uh, yeah, I, I found it kind of weird that that wasn't in the game. I felt like when I played the demo that it was going to be in the game, and then I was pretty surprised when I picked up the real game and it wasn't there. I feel like for Midgar, maybe it makes a bit more sense because you're constantly switching between the characters, but for part two, I'd have to imagine we're controlling Cloud for 90% of the game, so it would be nice to be able to switch around. Combo attacks like in Chrono Trigger. Like when people thought that Tifa steps on Cloud's Buster Sword and propels herself onto an enemy in a preview screenshot actually do that. And maybe tie that to a relationship meter. The better you treat people, more combo attacks become available and get stronger. Yeah, I like this idea a lot, and Square Enix has already showed that they do want to do something with like the relationship mechanics. So maybe they could do something like that in part two. I think that would be pretty cool. All in all, a video game should be a fun and magical experience. Aw, that's it. The cutest little comment. Add more depth to the level design. No overcomplicated puzzles, but puzzles that at least require thinking and don't waste your time. Yeah, I kind of miss the PS1 mechanic of actual puzzles that you have to really solve. In today's world with Google, you can easily look up the answer if you hate puzzles. You know, back then it was frustrating because if you couldn't figure out the puzzle, a lot of times you just couldn't finish the game. But nowadays, if you like puzzles, you'll try to figure it out yourself, and if you don't like puzzles, you'll just Google it. So, I think it'd be a cool thing to have. The only thing I want, other than obvious upgrades like camera and arrow combat, is for small open world style sections with enemies to fight everywhere. Just open the game up a little bit. Yeah, I, there were a lot of comments that people were talking about how there's really no nice place to grind. You have to just use the chapter select and go through some cutscenes and then fight some enemies. Um, with the world map being a potential, or even if you have some kind of fast travel system between 
different towns. If you could fast travel to just like an open field where there's just enemies and you can just fight them and level up and use your skills and stuff, that'd be really nice. This might be blasphemous, but I actually want them to go further away from the expected storyline of Seven. I am really excited to see what these characters, who we know and love, react given similar but different circumstances, and to see if the story playing out differently makes them develop into different characters. Guys, we got a code red here. We got an opinion alert. Cue the siren. Opinion alert. Opinion alert. No, I definitely agree. I want to see some curveballs in the story. I want to see these characters react in ways that I've never seen them react in before. I want to get surprised by the game and not just see the same stuff I've always seen again. But I also want them to tone it down a bit. More secrets in side dungeons rather than just side quests. Yeah, being someone that really enjoys easter eggs, I'd love to see more of that kind of thing in the game. It's kind of hard because asking developers for easter eggs pretty much guarantees that they're going to be crappy ones. It kind of has to be something that they come up with on their own for it to be fluid and, and interesting. But uh, I'd like to see more stuff like that. Not just call-outs to the games, but actual secrets you have to unlock by doing something. Um, there was the library in part one that I could have swore was going to be an easter egg and ended up being nothing at all. Um, so I'd like to see something like that. Uh, also, side dungeons would be really nice. I really loved the side quest where you went and fought the uh, behemoth. That actually felt like kind of a dungeon in a way, even though it was an area that you'd already been in before. I want to see some side quests that are just like, go to this dungeon and fight this boss. Stuff like that. It takes too long to swing your sword when breaking Shinra boxes outside of battle. Yeah, it kind of does. Game was thrash. But that, but that, that didn't answer my question. Final Fantasy VII Remake is a lost cause. Uh, well, I think Square Enix's stacks of money might have something to say about that. The first game being in a sense a giant tutorial and taking into account the probability that nearly every buyer of Part 2 will have played Part 1, I'll say just go full ham with the combat system and possibilities. Just crank the complexity of encounters and stuff to collect up to 11. Really make it complete and very deep the more you invest time in the game, kind of like Final Fantasy X for the optional stuff. See, I would love to see this, but it's just not something that I think Square Enix will ever do. In the past, Square Enix has showed us that it's very important to them that all of their games are very available to everyone. They never want to make people feel like they have to play previous games in order to play their new games. You can see this with certain Final Fantasy sequels like X2, 13 2, and Lightning Returns, but honestly just Final Fantasy in general has always been this way. The whole idea of the series was to have each game a completely new experience so that you could pick up any of the games in the line and enjoy them. So I very much doubt that Part 2 is going to be void of tutorials or be super complex from the beginning. But it would be nice if they did something kind of like they did in Kingdom Hearts 3 where they give you the option to read up on the previous games without just shoving it in your face with a bunch of cutscenes that explain what happened in part one. Fire Nomura. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I really loved and enjoyed everything we got this time around. Only change I hope for is that the character you are currently controlling be in the middle of the name stack so that it's clearer about who you are selecting when you press up or down. Oh my... That's genius. Sora DLC. Turns out the Whispers are actually Organization 13 and boom, Kingdom Hearts 4. Alright, that's going to be it for this delve into everyone's opinion on Part 2, but please keep the conversation going. We saw with Part 1 that the more we talked about it, the more Square Enix listened, and so I would love to hear some more thoughts about what you think should be in Part 2. Thank you so much for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.